got like HD quality to make it look. Yeah, we stepped, we stepped it up. Uh, we got Coach April joining us first as we run through the outside linebackers today. Um, then we're going to follow him with, with Noah and work down that list that I had sent out. So we'll start with questions for Bobby with Jesse Temple. Bobby, what types of things do you expect Nick Herbig to provide in his second year in the group? And, and how can Noah Burks take another step and, and lead the group as well? Yeah, I'll start with Nick. Uh, Nick brings a, a energy about him and a, and a love for the game that you don't see from many guys. So uh, I think just the enthusiasm and effort and his ability to understand what's expected will increase his role even more than what it has. I'm not saying like as a starter, your role ends, right? Like I think your role in the locker room changes the longer you're a starter or the more years that you put in. So I think that's his next step is really becoming the best player he can be on the field, but also being a, a key contributor off the field. Uh, for Noah, it's very similar, you know, uh, a super senior, he still has stuff to work on. He's not ready made, right? So uh, daily drills and technique stuff, he still needs a lot of that stuff. Uh, he needs to, you know, really focus in on his improvement, how he can become better and putting that effort towards uh, helping others in the room as well, right? Don't just be a outside linebacker, right? Be an impact outside linebacker within our group. And uh, I think he's making those steps, right? I, I, it's, I, it's noticeable uh, that, that his energy isn't based upon the individual growth, that it's upon the team growth. Steve McGargy. Just regarding Noah, he can still get better. Aside from being more of a leader, just in terms of his game itself, where can he improve, do you think? Did you say Nick or did, did you say Noah? Noah, sorry. On, on Noah? Noah. Uh, no, Noah, I would say a big part of what we focus on right now is going to be Noah's pass rush, his ability to impact the passer. Uh, it's been an area of focus for him. Uh, and we both know that, and you guys know as well, that that's an area that didn't show up as much for us last season. And it needs to be a factor this coming season. And that's been our focus. Jeff? Yeah, Bobby, I'm guessing you would like as many guys as possible that you can turn to in a given week, especially if injuries hit Noah and Nick. We haven't seen practice yet, so who are some of the guys who are putting themselves in position to help you and build the depth and also maybe step forward and make more plays? Yeah, I, there's three guys out there right now that I was hoping would show up to practice and show up in a way that uh, – they would be loud on tape, right? And those three guys are CJ Getz, Spencer Lytle, and Aaron Witt. Uh, all three of those guys, as you come to practice, will be noticed out there. Uh, they're, they're bringing energy, high effort, and a physicality that, uh, that we didn't have from them last season. Uh, they're definitely pushing the group and forming some great depth there. Jake? Hey, Bobby, you mentioned Aaron Witt, but there's also another, you know, second year player in Caden Johnson, uh, you know, that, you know, came with last year's class, you know, along with Nick Kirby, but with Aaron and, and Caden, just what growth are you seeing out of them? I, we saw Aaron make that, you know, an appearance of the sack, you know, in the bowl game and whatnot, but what, what strides are you seeing from them so far with, with spring ball too? Yeah. So Caden's been down, he, he's had a hamstring and we have, we haven't been able to work with him. Uh, we're hoping to get him back in a week. So, I can't give you much there as far as advancement with him, but as far as Aaron goes, I definitely can. Uh, Aaron's built different, right? And, and I'm not talking about physicality, length, and all that. We can see all that. But his mindset towards the game is, is a different factor. Like, the, the guy is a guy you want in a street fight with you, right? He has no fear to put his face into the into the boiler and, and come out, right? Like, uh, he just – he ticks different, and, and, and he helps our room because – if you if you if you're wanting to look for a physical play, he's going to go try to find it, and it's hard to coach that, right? It's hard to coach a guy to to put his body or whatever it may be on the line for you, and he'll do it without even a blink. So uh, it, that's a fun part about Aaron, and he's a yes coach kind of guy, right? Uh, he likes to say yes sir, but he knows that frustrates me. But he's a yes coach kind of guy. So if we're looking at any type of detail that he needs to improve on, he's a yes coach, 
you know, it's not what, what if it's yes, coach got it. And got to appreciate that from a guy that has that talent too. Colton. Sticking with Aaron for a second, you, you mentioned his height and the physicality. What does that give him an ability to do or what does that make him need to work on because he's one of the taller guys that you'd see at this position? Yeah. So, so the advantage is, I would say, just the length, right? The ability to, to separate off blocks, to, to be able to, uh, you know, even do different types of pass rush moves because of the ability to separate. That's the number one thing that will show up in length. The, the problem with length at our position is that when you have long limbs as far as legs, right, like your first step is long. Everything is a little bit longer, so it's a little bit slower. So for us, it's to keep his pad level down. Like that's a huge factor that we talk about because of the height uh, and the ability to keep his feet with under himself, with, underneath himself opposed to being wide. Like little things like that uh, that you can get away with if you've got your hand in the dirt all the time. But with us having a hand in the dirt sometimes, sometimes not, two point, three point, whatever it may be, he's got to learn a way to just stay with great pad level. Yeah. Zach Heilprin. Hey, Bobby, uh, you guys got a couple of new uh, eyes and voices there in your defensive room, coaches room with Hank and, and Ross. What has that been like to this point? It's been great. Uh, it's a different type of energy. Uh, it, it brings out uh, more of a coach of you, right? Like questions are different, right? Uh, the view of the game is different. So it makes you think more about the game itself. Uh, I, I like bouncing ideas off those guys. Uh, it's been it's been a pleasure, really. I, I've really enjoyed working with them, and uh, the energy they bring to their group, the energy they bring to recruiting, uh, and the energy energy they bring to our staff has been awesome. Back to Jesse. You mentioned three guys you had hoped to stand out have done so. What about Isaiah Green May and, and T.J. Bowlers? And I apologize if you addressed either one of those guys. My video cut out for a minute. Oh, that's okay. I, I didn't, but I will now. Uh, Green May's been out. Uh, he, he hasn't practiced yet, and he still will be out by the time you guys get here. Uh, I don't know disclosure on that stuff right now, but he won't be practicing. Uh, he's on the team. Uh, yeah, he will be out on the field, but he, he's not going to be on pads. Uh, TJ Bowler's done a really good job. You're talking about a mid-year kid who uh, played offensive tackle uh, his senior year in high school. You know, and really looking at a guy who's really – you know, it's kind of crazy to think this, but he would be getting ready for prom. And, and we say that every year about these mid-year guys, like it's, it's amazing what they can do, but he's one of the guys that, you know, maturity levels there, want is there, energy's there to get better. Uh, he just has, you know, he's got to take a couple bumps here and understand the footwork, the hand placement, the bigger picture of the game. Uh, but there, there's a talent, right? Where when he doesn't have to think, right? You're, whoa. That guy's, he's got it. We just got to get him to not think and be able to do what we do, which, you know, that's, that's my job, right? So I, I got to get him going. Back to Colton. Have you noticed any type of, I don't know, frustration is the right word, or just kind of when the guys have gone back and looked at the season, the fact that the pass rush production wasn't there in terms of sacks and other things like that, do they kind of, have they kind of taken them down to themselves or how have you seen that uh, come up in the offseason? Yeah, I would say that uh, obviously you want to do, you want to show production, right? And a lot of times production is shown in stats outside of our room, right? And uh, sometimes that becomes a selfish deal too. So we don't harp much on like, hey, you didn't get this done. We more harp on, how did you impact what we do? You know, th there's a lot of times this past season that there was a lot of quick release vertical concepts that we didn't see when we were playing it the year before, right? Be it what it is, or the teams that we faced at the time that we were facing them, we saw a little bit more drop back and protection scheme. So uh, that all plays into it as well. You know, the ball comes out at a certain time. Uh, you can only do so much to, to get to the passer, right? To get the stat of a sack, but to impact the passer, by putting a tackle in his feet or, or putting a, you know, a running back on, on his rear end, whatever that may be in the situation, that also is an impact uh, that doesn't get seen outside of maybe the room. So there's definitely an area that we want to improve as far as those production numbers, but I also feel that we did impact the passer when we needed to in certain situations. 
All right, we'll wrap things up for Bobby with one more from Jeff. Bobby, certain guys come in with high expectations in part because of their recruiting profile. And I know you guys don't pay attention to that, but Lytle came in with some, some hype around him, but I believe injuries have affected him. Has that been one of the main factors that have kind of slowed his progress a little bit? And is he healthy now? I think you hit right on the head that the, so we just talked about TJ, right? Coming in as a mid-year guy, having to learn the learning curve of being a, you know, being an outside linebacker in our system, which is, it's not easy, right? It is what it is. But he came in as a mid-year and actually showed up as a good player. That's early, right? You're like, whoa, this guy's got something. His first camp, when we come back, right, you're excited about kind of what we get, what can we get out of him going into the summer and fall there. Uh, he gets hurt, right? Uh, so he misses all of fall camp. As soon as he comes back off fall camp, gets banged up again. So really, this is the first time that he knows the defense. The first time he's been healthy for an entire really off season to build into what he's become. He's put on great weight. He's put on great numbers in the weight room, right? His his uh, his speed has increased. Like all of his maxes are are up, right? Uh, which is a sign that the guy's working, right? If your maxes plateau or drop, you'd say, hey, this guy's he's not he's, he hasn't found his realm. Everything's going up, and um, the speed of the game to him is not too big, right? Uh, the physicality of the game is not too big right now. Uh, so I, I've enjoyed working with him. Like, he's a really smart football player that, that has foot quickness and intangibles that we work with. And uh, he'll definitely be a guy, though, that's going to pop out there for you guys. Like, he's, he's moving quick. Like, uh, I can't compare him to anybody right now because I don't want to put him in that stage or that, in that kind of a folder. But he, he's a Spencer Lytle, and it's impressive right now. All right. Thanks, Bobby. Appreciate the time. Thanks, guys. I appreciate you guys.